Have you found yourself in the predicament of having thousands of LEDs that you want to arrange and program as a volumetric display? No? Well, I mean, that makes sense. It's not a very common problem. Unfortunately, due to my ambitious project ideas and being able to convince somebody to give me a budget, I found myself in that exact position. So today, I'm going to break down how I programmed nearly 5,000 LEDs and made the Radiant Rose. There are a multitude of ways of programming larger LED displays. For this project, I needed to lock in key features that I wanted for my display. Now, before I started this project, I didn't have a lot of experience working with LEDs, so I had to take my limited knowledge and figure out how I could create this display in a limited amount of time. For this system to operate as a true 3D display, we needed to create a digital model of it inside the computer. We then needed to take that digital model and bring it into Touch Designer, which we then used to drive our LEDs as a large-scale display. I use Cinema 4D, but you can use pretty much any 3D modeling software to get to this point. From the start, I made sure to keep my digital model as close to real-world scale as I could. I wasn't trying to get one-to-one -one replication, but I knew the closer I was to keeping it real-world scale, the easier it would make my process down the line. I used the 3D software to create some renders that I used in my project proposal. This allowed us to quickly design some looks that we wanted to create, and then also to sell our vision to the people that were going to give us the budget. While we're still in our 3D design software, I'm going to create a spline layout that matches our real-world scale. This spline needs to have the same number of points that we're going to have LEDs in the real world. We're eventually going to use this spline to pixel map our lights later down the line. Alright, I just threw out a lot of concepts and a lot of terms you may not be familiar with. So we're going to take a quick sidebar to get everybody caught up to speed so we can get through the rest of this video. LED tape or LED strips are the core of this project. There are many different types of strips on the market that come in a variety of shapes and sizes. For this project, I chose a couple key features for our strips. We needed to have our pixels be individually addressable as opposed to a whole strip or group controls. We needed a 12 volt strip since we were running hundreds of LEDs in series and didn't want to deal with the power drop that comes at lower voltages. These strips are made up of a series of pixels. Pixels are built to a specific protocol. This means that different LEDs have different constructions and features. We chose the WS2815 pixel protocol. These pixels run at a higher refresh rate and generally show up better on video recordings. These pixels work by utilizing a data line along the strip which helps the LEDs determine their order. Basically, when the first LED receives the signal, it says, hey, I'm pixel number one. The pixel next in line is number two and sends that along. The next pixel then receives the signal and says, hey, I'm pixel number two, and the next pixel is three, and so on down your data line. Along with that, our particular strip had a redundant data line built into the strip. Without the extra data line, we could have run into a Christmas light situation, meaning that if one of our lights went out, the rest of the lights after it would have gone out as well. Now these strips won't do anything on their own. You need some sort of controller to tell the lights what to do. On the simple end, you can buy a pixel controller that connects to your phone or you can buy an Arduino and write your own custom program. We used an Arduino to create a test bench that we used to test our bars during production. This controller ran a simple program that would go through the different colors and test each individual light to see that they were working in sequence. Since we were controlling thousands of LEDs, we needed something a little more robust to make sure that we were able to control the entire sculpture. We need a dedicated pixel control board. We're using the Advitec Pixlite 16 MK2. It has enough outputs on it to control all of our lights, as well as supporting our advanced pixel control. That, along with built-in fuses, made this board perfect for our project. Oh yeah, and before I forget, warning, electricity is dangerous. The only reason I'm confident about this project is because I worked with an electrician who looked over my designs and made sure that I was within line. Your project's gonna have its own unique power requirements. Make sure you do proper research before you try to build anything. You don't wanna hurt yourself or your electronics. Okay, that was a lot. Don't worry about getting it all at once. It took me weeks of research to finally understand the whole concept and be able to understand the nuances that went into this project and use it effectively. So now that we have our designs together, it's time to build our spline layout. This spline object is gonna be our digital representation of LEDs. Not only does this give us locations of our pixels in real world scale, but it also gives us proper sequencing of all of our LEDs. 
It's really important that this spline has the exact same number of pixels that we do of LEDs, and that it's sequenced in the same way that we're gonna sequence our bars. Now I wanna make some notes before we get into the next part of this video. When I first started creating this project, I had no experience in programming other than bu building some basic Arduino programs. Since this project, I've been learning Python and other programming languages to expand my capabilities. And having that knowledge now, I would definitely approach this project completely differently. But this video is about how I made it at that time, not how I would have made it. So let's get back to that. We're gonna use this spline to help us with our next step, pixel mapping. In simple terms, pixel mapping is taking an LED and mapping it to an image or a video to run that LED's color. Now with this particular layout of LEDs, there's unfortunately no simple way of mapping the LEDs to a flat image without overlapping. So at this point, I created an alternate version of our spline. This spline, when viewed from above, allowed us to map the LEDs to a simple image without any overlaps. This meant that we could use any image source to drive our LEDs. Using this method, I was able to map our LEDs to a video source, convert that data to the right signal, and then send it to our pixel control board using ArtNet. Now I glossed over a lot there, but this isn't a touch designer tutorial. However, I will link you to the tutorial I followed to get me to this point below. That tutorial is a great one to watch if you're trying to get into pixel mapping with touch designer. We used a lot of touch designer built-in effects to create our basic looks. There was one problem though. Using the system, we weren't able to get true 3D animations using the generative sources. Unfortunately, everything was just mapped to a 2D image, which caused it to have the cascading look over it. To get true 3D animations to show up on our display, we needed to jump back into our 3D software to create some custom content. I decided to use Cinema 4D and the field systems to build our true 3D animations. The system I built used shapes going over our spline to create 3D animations. This would then drive a separate system that created a 2D map that we were then able to import back into Touch Designer, which then created true 3D animations scrolling across the display. This system allowed me to create unique shapes and displays that I could easily control and then export for Touch Designer. We use these pre-generated loops along with the generative content to then create our final display that would be showing on the sculpture throughout the night. Our system, while a bit unconventional, allowed us to quickly iterate on ideas and build new things quickly inside Touch Designer. This project truly pushed my skills in many aspects. At the beginning of this project, I had very little experience building electronic systems. Luckily, through perseverance and the help of several skilled individuals, we were able to create a display that was gonna light up the night sky. Thank you for walking through this project with me. I know I glossed over a lot of details in this project, so please leave your questions in the comments below and be sure to subscribe so when I answer your questions in a follow-up video, you'll be notified. Now please, enjoy some more designs built on the Radiant Rose.